Hi, welcome back to the Cuzzy Sound channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I put together my inline attenuator and demonstrate how you would use an inline attenuator on a modular analog system. Um, so what's an inline attenuator? Well, an attenuator really is, it's a, a something that backs off the signal cools the signal down, some signals can come through a bit hard, you cool them down, um, basically it reduces the signal level, it attenuates it, so that's an attenuator. An inline attenuator, it just happens to be in line with the patch cables, so that's what that is. The idea for this, um, well the original idea for this was the Synth DIY guy did a series called Patch Pals and um, he did a range of but basically passive utility type things, I was going to say modules, but it's not really a module, that could actually sit in line with the patch leads. Um, also, um, if you go to um, Christian's Modular in a Week series, he's uh, used a couple of the ideas on, on there, or at least one of the ideas. Um, now, I decided to do this because I salvaged some of these tiny little potentiometers and I thought oh right I could use one of those and build one of these patch pal things now the thing is when you've got a, a DIY system like like my project 12 um, it's all analog and the thing is that there isn't it's not like you're right there isn't a consistent voltage running through it um, you get quite a wide range of voltages and sometimes the voltage coming out of one module that you want to feed into another module can be a little bit hot. So the best way to cool it down if you like is to attenuate it. So an inline attenuator will come in handy for that sort of thing. I'll demonstrate a couple of uses for this. The other way to do it as well is that sometimes kind of the level of the say a, a control voltage going in you can control voltage levels with this because if we have a look at the circuit diagram what you can see is what's inside the encapsulation is basically a voltage divider um, if you like it's a, it's a passive volume control so on one socket your input socket you've got the signal goes in at one end of your potentiometer the other end of the potentiometer is connected to ground and then the output socket is connected to the middle leg or the wiper of the potentiometer and as you turn the pot you change the uh, resistance ratio between the input the output and ground acts as a voltage divider so you divide up the voltage that comes out of the output so as you, as you kind of in, increase the resistance you can attenuate the voltage um, very simple really so there's not a lot to it so what I did, I got a couple of small sockets and my small potentiometer and I wired them up as per circuit diagram. Having done that, I then got some heat shrink tubing and you'll notice I've used white heat sink tubing on this and the reason why is so that I could write on it which was the input and which was the output. Now. To remember which was the input and which was the output after you put the heat shrink tubing on and could no longer see how you'd solder them up, you will notice that on one end I'd actually put one of those knurled locking screws on the threads of the jack socket um, so I knew that that one was the input so when I couldn't see how I'd wired it up I still knew which one was the input so I could label it up on the outside of my white heat shrink. Well, that's it really. That's it's very very simple. It's a passive circuit, three components, and all wrapped in a bit of heat shrink. So there you go, the inline attenuator. But what can you use it for? Right. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug it into my Project 12 DIY modular analog synth, and show you a couple of ways in which you can control the voltages of the signals that are buzzing round on the synth buzzing <laughs> sorry excuse the pun got a very simple patch set up here 
I've got the output from the sawtooth on the 3340 VCO going into the mixer which is going to the audio external audio mixer to record the audio on, on the video and then going in I've got a sequence running on the key step which is going into the CV control on the oscillator so really really simple what does that sound like if I get the right control on the mixer it sounds it sounds a little something like that now my inline attenuator I'm going to do some hot plugging so I'm not touching any of the controls at all and all I'm going to do I'm going to remove the output signal patch cable and in its place I will put the cable with the attenuator in the middle. Now I haven't touched anything else. So you should actually be getting pretty much the same signal we got before. So what I'm doing now, if I turn the pot down, it is indeed acting like a volume control so it's attenuating the signal reducing the voltage, reduces the amplitude, reduces the overall volume there you go that's one way of using it if I Plug it back in so we're, we're back to the original sound that we had. Now, if I take the input end, of my uh, attenuator, and I'm going to plug that to the output of an LFO. Now, on the input to the CV on the VCO, I've got one of those starfish multi-plug things. So and now that was with the attenuator turn right down. It kind of because um, it's grounding things out, it interferes with the signal. So it's a slight tweak to turn it back up, and it's made no difference to the original sound because um, you know we're not letting any of, or very very little of, the LFO through. But if I start to turn up the attenuator, we start to get a little bit of the LFO signal coming through. So I'm essentially what I'm doing, I'm using the LFO as a control voltage, a CV signal, and what the attenuator is doing now is controlling the level of that CV signal that's been mixed in with the sequence of CV signal coming from the key step. They increase it further. That's it flat out. We're now into some kind of freaky sci-fi B-movie stuff. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, by using it to attenuate your some CV signals, you can actually start to use it actively in it's a classic component using that to do it. Uh, use it actively in manipulating the sounds. So there you go. Inline attenuator. Very cheap, very simple, but possibly loads of fun. So, yeah, I've given you a very simple circuit diagram. There's only three components in there. Can't be that difficult, so go on, have a go, build your own.